Hey, this is David Goldenberg from 11 Ads for Brands, and I've got a special guest for today's episode. It's Stephen Pope, the founder of My Amazon Guy Amazon Agency, and we're going to talk about some very cool things, starting from tacos and some mistakes he's seeing many sellers making, as well as how to improve your Amazon video ads, what you can do in terms of your headline ads if you're using Store Spotlight format, which I highly encourage, as you guys probably know by now. So if you like the video, please subscribe or hit the like button. That's all down below. And, you know, share, tell your friends, hey, this is where I'm learning about sponsored brands and how I'm growing my sales and improving my ACOS, my tacos, all those metrics. So stay tuned and see for yourself. Hey, this is David Goldenberg from 11 Ads for Brands, and I'm live with Stephen Pope, founder of My Amazon Guy. Thanks for joining me, Steve. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great. I've been watching your YouTube channel a bunch, uh, learning a lot from you, impressed at the breadth of content you're putting out there, and you know, frankly, a bit intimidated. I'm like, is this guy Steve? How does he, you know, <laughs> trying to put out so many uh, videos and in depth, you know, not just random stuff. So um, you guys can check out his channel, My Amazon Guy on YouTube, Stephen Pope. And he has a full service Amazon agency. Why don't you tell us a bit more about what you guys do, Stephen? Yeah, so we help 160 full service brands sell more stuff on Amazon. Um, so anything that generates traffic in the form of PPC and SEO and anything that improves conversion rates in design and catalog management. Amazing. When you talk about catalog management, does that also get into researching products for your customers? Um, no, we, we try not to do any of the pre-launch stuff like sourcing. Uh, so I think, I think that area has really been commoditized. Like it's like the number one area that like you, you'll see virtual assistants be trained for. Right. Um, so, so it's just really not a business model for us. But basically, you know, post source, we'll take care of anything within Seller Central. So that's really where we where we focus our 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 attention. Got it, got it, got it. So why don't you tell me, you know, take me through a typical uh, customer signs up, says, Steve, give me the full service. I want you to manage, you know, the <coughs> you know, you do your initial audit, I want you to look at our catalog, you know, do the SEO, do the PPC, do the design. How does it work? What happens once they sign up with my Amazon guy? So we're going to run in and audit the account. We're going to do a, an onboarding survey. We ask an extensive amount of information, you know, questions like on a scale of one profit at the cost of growth to 10 growth at the cost of profit. What's your number? Mm. And based on that number, you know, if somebody tells me there are three, I might question and say, well, why did you sign up with my Amazon guy? We're a growth center. Right. right. And so it's just a good way for us to know like what the customer is expecting and, and we'll know, um, Houston, we have a problem before we even onboard if, if their number is, um, you know, a one or a two for profit. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're marketers, we're, we're digital marketers that are going to go in there and blow stuff up and try and get as much traffic as humanly possible. Uh, some of the things that a lot of brands don't get correct. So let's say you're a million dollar brand today and you're looking to take it to the next level. Um, common mistakes that people make, they don't advertise enough or their organic traffic is under, um, underdeveloped. For you know, example, uh, I'm, I'm a big, big advocate for putting copy into A plus content. Amazon has a public stance where they talk about um, how they don't index A plus content, and right. a lot of people still believe them. They're big fat liars, though, and we've tested this <laughs> multiple times. Okay, um, and, and you can you you know for those that are listening, you can take this home yourself. Go test yourself. Go pick up any single photo in the um, a plus content design and put into the alt text some spanish okay. within 48 hours your your listing is going to index for spanish which oh. proves <laughs> i love it and indexes <laughs> right so Very nice. stuff like that um, main images i think people always mess those up and they don't put all of their accessories in the main image or mm. if you get like a 12 pack they'll show 12 of the item instead of a blown up version of the one with like you know, a secondary uh, emoji expressing mm -hmm. the 12-pack, you know, stuff like that. We see it all the time. And yeah. So what we'll do is we'll go in there. We'll pull whatever levers we can to try and find the fastest way to grow traffic and, and conversion rates on Amazon. Very cool. Very cool. So <coughs> um, some of our audience, you know, are probably more experienced. Some are probably less experienced. So 
Uh, are you guys, you know, for those people who don't know, maybe you can tell people a bit about if you guys are testing, you know, uh, content. Right? There have been different tools, uh, third-party tools, uh, that have tried to do that uh, in the past. Um, you know, I think not, not really uh, worked well so much. I'd love to hear if that's your take as well. But I saw Amazon also... Uh, came out with their own tool a while, maybe a year ago or something to do this and we've used it a bit uh, within the uh, brand dashboard right to a b test the the titles and the main images right you're talking about uh, getting the main image wrong for example are you guys doing that what are some what are some uh, tactics that you're seeing work well for you know improving titles or main images and how, how are you I, testing I, so I'm a certified partner for Picfu um, nice. and and so I Tell highly recommend that is. Yeah. So if you haven't tested that out before, um, here's a 50% off code. Just go to pickboo.com slash my Amazon guy. And, and so we're one of very few certified agency partners. And the reason why we run this is because, you know, it's free inside of Seller Central to run an A-B test, but it takes eight weeks to collect your data. And that's eight weeks of sales that you could optimize significantly faster by just running a pick food test and yeah. you'll get your answer in under 60 minutes. Right. They, they pull 50 people and you can go in there and ask any question, Hey, which title would you prefer? Or, Hey, uh, which image would, would you more likely click on in the search result page? Right. right. Or, you know, Hey, here's my product versus competitors. Which are you more likely to buy? All of those are valid tests to run um, for 50 bucks essentially and get 50 answers right out. So, um, that's the best way to do it, in my opinion. Uh, you can you can find out a lot of good information. And sometimes, like, let's say you and your partner are arguing and they're like, hey, I think we should do A. And your partner's like, I think we should do B. Well, if, you know, solve you? the problem first, then then fight about it, right? Just go run the pick food test and then, sure. then the problem's over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Instead of arguing, just get data, hear what the customers care about. And that's, you know, the number one answer. It's not my opinion, your opinion. It's just, you know, whoever... Whoever has the dollar, you know, gets the last word. I just got this smoothie delivered from my my wife, so I'm gonna test this out. It looks looks like it's got some strawberry, maybe some secret ingredients in this. Secret ingredients. I can't tell my clients, but my kids say I can't tell my clients what the secret ingredient is. All right. Okay. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy. It. And uh, if we see if we see strawberry smoothies listed on Amazon and you know ranking out of nowhere, we'll know who uh, whose secret ingredients is powering that. I've got six kids, uh, or four kids, six and under. Wow. So, yeah. So it's a my personal motto: of prosperity in all things. Uh, <laughs> I run the company and they run the family the same way. Very nice. Okay. You're not growing fast enough. Come on, we need you optimized, kid. <laughs> what do you mean you're still wetting the bed at age four? <laughs> Your tacos is only 8%. You're underspending on ads. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Dad, can I have one more taco? No, I said you're optimized. Move. <laughs> yeah. Dinner time is over. When you try and talk tacos to somebody for the first time who'd never heard of it before, they just think you're an absurd alien from a different planet. <laughs> so tacos, for those of you who don't know, is total advertising cost of sale. And you're taking basically the common Amazon uh, ROI metric, uh, which is ACOS, advertising cost of sale, and that's your spend divided by your sales, right? So for each dollar of sales, how much do you have to spend on your advertising? And then instead of looking at it in that sort of narrow perspective, because advertising has an impact on your organic rankings, so the point is to look at the broader sales, right? If I look at all my spend, and all my sales, right? What is the total ACOS, right? So if you spent, let's say, $100,000 last month and you made a million dollars, so your total ACOS in that case would be 10%, right? Um, and there's different ways you can do it. Some people do it on the product level, some people do it at the product line level. Uh, there's, all, there's all kinds of different uh, ways to slice and dice that. Um, you know, I'd love to hear what, what your own approach is on that, Steve. So when we first launch a product, um, we'll do tacos of usually 30%. Um, month two, try and get it down to 20%. Doesn't always happen. <laughs> month three plus, try and get under 14%. Um, a healthy tacos today is anywhere from 11 to 15%. And we saw PBC costs in 2021 go up 35%. Wow. Um, variety of reasons costs went up. You know, one of the primary drivers is 
Amazon aggregators entering the space, $13 billion were raised last, you know, just in the last, you know, 15 months or so. Um, so there's a lot of money bags coming in and, and it's, it was an undertapped lever that they can spend lots of money on. Um, other reasons for PPC costs going up. Um, we saw that physical retail stores aren't seeing as best bang for their buck, um, pushing people into the stores. So they're reallocating budgets to where it does work, which on Amazon it does. So um, it's never been a better time to sell on Amazon, but it's also never been harder to sell on Amazon. So I, I usually like to uh, indict the uh, the ninja hackers of uh, the Amazon selling YouTube celebrity community, right? If somebody says that you can, you know, uh, be a part-time Amazon seller during nap time uh, <laughs> as a mom. Make money Let me tell you, it's not going to work. It's not like Etsy business. It's 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 a real business, and and so real businessmen uh, are required. <laughs> real investments are required, and and so I usually like to use like a threshold. If you spent ten thousand dollars and didn't see that money back in any shape or form, would you lose your shirt? Could you pay rent? If the answer is no, then selling on Amazon is not the right time for you. But if the answer is yes, then side hustle for a year before you go full time on this, generally speaking. Um, regular Amazon uh, size brands or, or retailers or wholesalers and manufacturers who have a successful model off of Amazon, they need to go over to Amazon. You're irrelevant if you're not on Amazon um, as a brand. And so especially a consumer packaged good. Um, those, are, those are reasons why you need to be on Amazon right now. So, you know, in defense of Etsy brands, I think there's definitely a lot of uh, real businesses that are carrying on on Etsy. But I think, you know, I, I hear your point that it's not something that you can do uh, and have full time income from just uh, playing around with this part time, which is, I guess, true of, you know, most other businesses. There may be a handful of exceptions. Right. But if you're not the, you know, the A plus student who, you know, slept through physics uh, classes and still showed up to the exam without preparation, pulled off an A and that carried through in college and, you know, post dark and, you know, likewise in your jobs, right? If you're not that, you know, one in a hundred thousand uh, people, so you're going to have to work full time to make it a full time income. That's legit. My question, um, if I can be, if I can, if I can follow up on that, when you look at tacos, right? What specifically, what spend specifically are you dividing by? What sales? Are you looking at this at the account level? Are you looking at this at an individual ASIN level? Are you looking at it at the, the parent ASIN or the child ASIN, right? Because, for example, <coughs> you know, an old hand like you is going to know, but for, for our uh, listeners, sometimes you'll advertise product A, right? So let's say the gray sweater. And then the customer says, oh, you know what? I like it in blue. And they buy blue. For whatever reason, maybe your blue sweater has a slightly higher margin, slightly lower margin, right? Or maybe it's it's significantly uh, different margin. Maybe they buy a medium and you're advertising large or vice versa, right? And so you were expecting that your margin was going to be 20%, but now maybe it's 10%, or you're expecting the margin is going to be 20 and now it's 30, right? So um, what is what is your approach to handling... <coughs> These discrepancies and then you know amazon counts the sale even if you sold something completely different right if, if you're a big retailer like i'm trying to think of a good example um well i would say you know but you know with a lot of SKUs, you could you could sell something completely different right so if, if you're in electronics let's say right so the guys who sold you that uh that mic right you know maybe they've also got like photography equipment Right. So they advertise the mic and, you know, somehow you end up on their store and you're like, oh, yeah, I wanted to get a new camera. And, you know, that you end up with a seven hundred dollar order when they're advertising, I don't know, a fifty dollar, hundred dollar mic. Right. Amazon still counts that towards the sales of the fifty dollar mic that, that was being advertised. So what's what's your approach with all that? How do you calculate the tacos? What spend? What sales? Tacos at the account level. Um you're, you're really only doing that for one of two reasons, right? You want to know, am I spending too much on ads or am I spending too little? Mm. And, and that's the reason why an account level question makes the most sense. When, when it comes down to the SKU level, I would operate that based on a cost and, and make those decisions based on the budget allocations of each of those individual products. Mm. So, 
you know, a lot of people ask me all the time, like, hey, I'm organically rank one for a bunch of keywords for my product. Should I turn off ads? Well, of course, no. Why? Why wouldn't you turn off ads if you're already showing up organic one? Is because if you turn off ads, you will no longer be organic one. I guarantee it. It'll happen within like 14 days. So because of that, then this becomes a question of, okay, can I make more money if I made a change to the campaign structure that I'm currently doing? Okay, well, if I can make more money by making a change to this campaign structure, what would that change look like? So for some products with the color variation that you mentioned, it might mean to only do generic keywords for um, one color, but do hyper niche keywords for the other. Because for whatever reason, nobody wants to buy hot peak spandex. They'd rather just go with their black yoga pants for obvious reasons, especially if you're a man. Um, so, <laughs> and David's over there laughing with the visual. Um, so let's erase that with some eye bleach. Um, and, and, and really what you need to do is you need to structure your campaigns in a way that allows you to leverage the best sales. If, if I'm selling two variations and one does two times better on ads, what does that mean? It means I'm going to spend 80% of my budget on it, of course. Um, and so everybody else is going to do the same thing. Um, typically speaking, the fastest way to grow sales on Amazon is to add more products. I did not say add more variations. Mm -hmm. If you add variations, you may not see a lift in sales unless your variation that you originally launched with was fringe and you went to the mainstream. But when you're mainstream and you start adding in the fringe variations, that that's generally not a, a, a good way to grow sales. Right. You're getting decreasing marginal returns. You might get a bit more, a bit more, but you know, once you've got five different color variations is, you know, dark brown going to be very different from dark blue or, you know, black probably not going to make a huge, a huge impact. I totally, I totally see that. Um, <coughs> you know, it's, it's interesting because one of the things we like to do with sponsored brand uh, campaigns is test the segmentation, meaning you have, well, I'm talking about the headline campaigns now with sponsored brands, right? You have your text campaigns had formerly known as headline search. And then, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, they introduced sponsored brand video as well. I'm not talking about that right now. Within the headline campaigns with text, you've got two formats. You've got your product collections and you've got your store spotlights. And store spotlights used to be in beta and it used to say that was mobile only. And they left that tag on way after it wasn't mobile only. We saw these things showing up on desktop. We're like, oh, that's interesting. And, um, one of the big things you want to test with your sponsored brands is how you're segmenting the audience if you're doing a store spotlight, right? So uh, just to take the microphone example, right? If somebody just searches the keyword microphone, there are dozens of different kinds of microphones, right? There's microphones for podcasting, there's microphones for music, there's microphones for particular instruments, there's <coughs> for halls, for, you know, a million different uh, uses and they, they are all picking up sounds in a different way. And you've got all these uh, different uh, accessories that can be bundled with it or sold separately. So if somebody just searches a vague keyword like that, right? If you take your, your old, old school product collection and just promoting three products from your catalog, right? If you're a Bose or you're a Sennheiser or something like that, um, Poke Audio. Who says that those three mics are going to be your best choice for a huge amount of different segments in that audience, right? You're speaking to like 10 different groups of people who are searching for microphone and you're expecting that three particular products are going to reach, you know, this, this huge thing. So, you know, our, our take on those keywords, especially the top of funnel, the vague keywords that still have a lot of traffic and make a lot of sales is you want to segment the audience and offer them choices at the category level. And that's, you know, linking up, this is, this is why I thought about it because of what you were saying, right? So for example, in that case, um, instead, of, instead of offering, for example, um, you know, some minor variation, right? Do I want the mic in black or in gray? I mean, you know, maybe that's some things you can offer down the line. But in the first place, ask them what kind of mic do they want, right? Do they want a condenser? Do they want something else? Do they want it, you know, to be wired or wireless, you know, what are the main features that distinguish your, your offerings? And, uh, you know, a little hack that you guys can do is you can see what navigation 
Amazon offers, sometimes in search results, right? They'll add in filters right there in the search results. If you look for rug, I don't know if they're doing it now, but I have a screenshot where I just plug in rug and then they say, you know, what size rug do you want? Right? And it's like uh, two foot by three foot, four foot by five foot, and, and so on, all the different sizes. So if I've got a big catalog of rugs, right? So I'm going to make three pages on my store. I'm doing, you know, two feet uh, up to five feet, something like that, and then six feet to 10 feet, and then over 10 feet. Right? I mean, it doesn't have to be precisely those, right? But I'm, I'm segmenting by size. And that's, I can A-B test that against segmenting by style, right? Maybe I'm doing Persian rugs versus cats versus, you know, landscapes, whatever it is. Um, uh, X's, you know, you know, wipe your feet on the X when you walk in the door, whatever, right? So you see what, what segments speak, and then you can, you can really scale. And that's helpful also for knowing what variations to create, right? Like we have a client where one segmentation scheme does so much better and they were bringing in all these kind of like incremental uh, variations. And I suggested, you know what? You used to have it broken down according to this main feature. And if you do that, we're seeing the click rates are better and the conversion rates are better. And that's probably how you want to group your SKUs, your uh, ASINs, you know, under one parent ASIN, based on that feature split and all these kind of other things that are, that are pretty secondary. Um, so anyway, that was, that was just a, <laughs> yes, I agree. So, so I ran. Good. <laughs> um, one of the things I think people, I think uh, underrate is the video component as well. Yeah. Um, sponsor brand videos are performing really well right now. And if you haven't, invest in some video animation, 30 second clips, show the product in use in the first five seconds. Yeah. Um, and it will, it'll, it'll do really well for you. Back on the headline ads that you're talking about, I think this is really lost on a lot of people that there's a lot of, ability to humanize the marketing, you know, sponsor products, put in your keyword, you're done, right? Yeah. That's it. Obviously a lot more complicated than that, but um, with, with sponsored brand headlines or even display, you can, you can load select images. You can right. decide how it's displayed. You can, and on the display ads, you can even write in um, what Love. text is, is showing there. Okay. So I think there's a lot of additional options that are under tap. Um, you know, most people are going to allocate 70 to 80 percent of their, their budget on sponsored products. But the next segment that they should be testing is sponsored brands. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, you know, what you've said is so big. I spoke to um, some people at a large uh, tool provider and, you know, they manage a lot of budget. And they shared, you know, they see sponsored brands in general having a higher conversion rate uh, and, lower ACOS than sponsored products. And I think this is the reason, right? It's, it's marketing 101, but because so many sellers and vendors start out with sponsored products, they don't realize this big difference with sponsored brands, what it means that you have control over your creative, right? Because sponsored products is just a listing. It doesn't matter if you're targeting chihuahuas, if you're dar or targeting, you know, dog pets, if you're targeting, you know, golden retrievers. It's the same ad no matter what. But if you're doing that with sponsored brands, you can have one ad for the Chihuahuas, you can have one ad for the Golden Retrievers, another ad for the Dashams, right? And By you the way, can... the Golden Retrievers are going to win. <laughs> okay. We know We're Steve's a Golden team. Retriever guy. Yeah, always go for the Golden Retriever creative. There you go. Um, so you can personalize that ad and now it's a lot more appealing, right? Instead of just having, um, you know, one ad uh, with the golden retriever all the time, uh, which is housing a bit, Stephen, but, you know, speaking to everybody. And if you start with that ad, you know, okay, maybe in general it's going to win because Stephen said it, so it's got to be the case. But, you know, what happens when it's the Chihuahua owner who's searching for dog food for small dogs, right? That picture of the golden retriever is not going to be as appealing, right? But if you change the headline and the merchandise around that to your formulas for small dogs, you know, you can convert better, you can get higher click through rates, uh, and so on. And that's that's just so powerful. And people I think don't don't appreciate that because they're coming from doing this with sponsored products a lot. I think I think there's a lot of credit to that. And and what people don't also realize too is that 
when somebody lands on Amazon today, not only is it the first place that people start their product search, but when they land on Amazon specifically, the entire above the fold is an ad right now. Right. And, and so headline ads are right at the very top. Exactly. So it's higher on the funnel, but it's also very much direct center attention. And so if you're trying to grow your brand today on Amazon, you have to leverage these fields. You have to leverage these segmentations, these advertising strategies, because if you don't, good luck. You can't just load a product and, and make the sales. I, I would know. I, I used to be part of the Amazon beta testing, right? Like I was, I was advertising rice cookers for two cents a click all day long, man. Wow. I had position one years and years ago. Nice. Those were the days. If only I had all of the money that I have today, back then that I could have invested, right? The best time to plant a tree was yesterday. Um, second best is today. today. So, but, but, you know, you can't control that. But what you can control is go run some data tests and go load it. And um, I, think, I think it's going to be very obvious, David, for anybody that, that runs a, a headline ad without a custom image, which one's going to perform better? For sure, for sure. Yeah, we, we tested that on a lot of different campaigns in our account when, when those came out. And um, we saw typically lifts around 20 to 30% in click-through rates. So if, if you're not going to do some like massive TV campaign to get me, more people searching for your search terms, which is the case for 99% of sellers, even the big CPG companies, right? Um, what you can do is you can get a bigger share of the market by basically getting your click rate higher and the custom image that Steve's talking about, right? Look for that in your sponsored brand headline um, campaign creation form, right? It's a little checkbox, add a custom image, you check that and then you can put in a, uh, a photo that can be, you know, a big win. You want to test that, bring this back to what Steve was mentioning at the start of the show about pick two. Right. We found that very valuable, not just for understanding which of two or three or more pictures is better. And, you know, we, we've spent uh, thousands of dollars on Pictou to know which photo is probably going to do best. But it also helps you uh, to understand why. Right? And this is valuable because you can use it in sponsored brands. You can use it in, in the custom images, I mean, on the headlines. You can use it in sponsored videos, right? What kind of footage should we be doing? Uh, and you can also use it for your product images, right? What do people want to see, right? Uh, and that just makes such such a big difference, right? One uh, customer got these like very fashionable photos uh, with models and the products in. A very artsy, not real setting. Put it that way, I don't want to get into too much detail and give away, you know, who I'm talking about, what I'm talking about. Basically, these, these images were a huge dud when we A-B tested them in sponsored brands, and they were a huge dud in Pick2. And, you know, you can find this stuff out and save yourselves thousands and tens of thousands of dollars in testing because you'll understand why it is, right? You'll understand what the customers want to see. What are they trying to find out from looking at the image? It's worth a thousand words. Well, what thousand words specifically, right? Right. What are they trying to learn from that image? So that's <coughs> something that's really beneficial. If you guys didn't uh, catch that earlier from what Steve was talking about, it's it's a, uh, a good tool for for polling and researching uh, photos and now videos. Add to that as an option as well. Um, so if the audience want to hear more about you, Steve, where can they check you out? So subscribe to me on YouTube. It's youtubecom slash guy. Um, and if you just want to say hello or shoot me an email, podcast at myamazonguy.com. We're always hiring. Um, one of my favorite reasons I go on to other people's podcasts is to meet other talent. Um, and so you, you can go to myamazonguy.com slash jobs. We are always hiring, always need more PPC talent. We always need more designers, account managers, you name it, hiring worldwide. So hope you guys uh, found some value in some of the things we discussed today. Uh, David, I appreciate you bringing me on. For sure. Great speaking with you, Stephen. I'm learning a lot. It's great speaking with an expert like yourself. And I hope you guys found value in this show. If you liked it, you know, please hit subscribe, add a like. Love to hear any questions or comments you have for Stephen and myself uh, down below. And, you know, if you guys know uh, somebody who'd be a great guest, love to hear it. Actually, Stephen, maybe let's leave off with that. Give me a few names who you think should be next guests on the show. 
I think you should bring on the other PPC experts. There's Destiny with Better MS and Michael at Ad Badger. Sure. Um, many, many other PPC experts I think your audience would appreciate hearing from. Excellent. All right. Thanks very much. Take care, Steven. All right. Thank you, you all, guys. Bye.